Welcome to the Daily Decrypt, where I don't need to tell you that it's all about currency competition. I'm your host, Amanda, and today's episode is brought to you by Bank to the Future. There is an undoubted mystique around anybody who can set a computer, a robot, to work mining magic internet money for them while they sleep. And there's even more mystique around someone who's something of a mining boss, someone who has incentivized other miners to pool their resources to maximize profitability. To find out more about what it means to be a mining boss, we reached out to Stephen Sokolowski, who runs with his brother the mining pool ProHashing. We run a altcoin mining pool that switches between the most profit profitable coins in script mining. We don't actually mine Bitcoins, we mine altcoins. And uh, so we, we mine about 160 or so uh, script coins and switch between them. And what it happened all the way up until November was that we always had an overwhelming number of people who requested payouts in Bitcoins. But around that time, it started to change and it went from about 90% payouts in Bitcoins down to now bitcoins are actually a minority of payouts so i think that at last glance yesterday it was somewhere around like 48 percent or so it might have gone up or down since then uh, we allow wow. any coins so the uh, the proportion of bitcoin payouts has gone down so your proportion of bitcoin payouts to your clients went from 90 percent late uh, in late to 2015 to today's 48 percent that just happened in like five months yes about that amount of time wow so so now tell me about i i'm thinking to myself what is like a day in the life of a script mining pool operator like when did you start pro hashing we started on december 23rd of 13 and a day in the life, I guess, is that uh, my brother is the day-to-day -day operations. His name is Chris. He, uh, he'll spend a good portion of his day responding to customer service issues and complaints like payouts didn't execute in a certain coin or things like that. He'll monitor the website, add and remove coins, uh, fix issues that might have happened with some of the servers. And then a good portion of this is also adding new features. Since we allow payouts in, in new coins, then we have, to, uh, we have to add exchanges. We have to add those new coins, some of which are different APIs, like uh, you know, uh, Ethereum functions quite differently than Bitcoin does. So it took a lot of time to add that. We have a variety of servers that need to be upcapped. I can get into that if you're interested in hearing about the architecture of the system. At this point in the interview, I asked Steve how many mining farms he and his brother Chris run. And I'll spare you my moment of embarrassment in which Steve explained to me that that's not what a mining pool does. Prohashing doesn't own mining hardware themselves, but rather acts as a single aggregation point for miners who would like to pool their resources together. They just point their miners towards the site. They mm -hmm. can choose to mine a specific coin, and if so, then they take the penalty because it's not going to be the most profitable. Or they can choose to mine the most profitable coin, in which case we look at the price of that coin at uh, various exchanges. Uh, after we've sold all the blocks that we're waiting on to sell, uh, we look at the difficulty of the coin, uh, we look at other factors like how much hash power is currently at, directed at the coin, what the orphan rate has been of that coin historically, and we come up with a number, and then that's how we can determine what the ordering of coins we should assign people is. And it generally comes out to be uh, five or six at any given time that make it into the most profitable category that everyone is mining on? Right now it has been. There's been times when certain coins have become extremely profitable. Uh, Aurora coins for a little while took over most of our mining, almost 75%, just because I guess nobody else was mining them or their price went up. And uh, so sometimes that happens. But a lot of the time we're mining a selection of very easy networks. 
and then a difficult network at the bottom for everybody else is like a base coin. And that's actually what we call it. There's a base coin where a lot of miners are assigned to, and at the very lowest, that's going to be Litecoin because it's the most difficult. And then most of our money is made when we see coins that are extremely profitable. Litecoin right now is about 2.6 cents, I think, per mega hash per second. Sometimes the network will appear that'll be like 80 cents for a minute. So we'll assign a lot of miners to that network and then return to mining the lower profitability networks right after that. And the vast majority of our money is made during those times of high profitability on those coins. We spend most of our time just waiting for that to happen. Huh. What gave you the idea, you and your brother, to even start a mining pool? Like, had you heard that it was something that people do? Or were you like, hey, uh, what if we can, what if we can like pool together the hashing power of other people and then they choose to pay us because we do them the service of selecting the most profitable coins at any given time? How did it come about? Well, what happened is that we, uh, in I think mid 2013 or so, we bought some GPUs and started mining Bitcoins and then Bitcoins were no longer mineable with GPUs. So we started mining script coins. We found this pool called the middle coin pool, which is now defunct. And the middle coin pool made, we estimated millions of dollars because there was a time in, I think November of 13 or so, when the profitability of light coins was up to the point where we with our GPUs were making $100 a day in, in this house alone. We made $2,000 just in the course of a month. And we thought, well, if we could make a pool that, uh, that could do this, we see that the middle coin pool made a million dollars, then maybe we could make some money too. It won't be a million because there's probably going to be a crash, but it'll be something. And we started our development. And one of the main things that we wanted to do that the middle coin pool did not do was to provide more, uh, more visibility into what our miners were mining so that they were confident they were actually getting paid what they were submitting their shares for because the middle coin pool just told people at the end of the day that you earned a certain amount which could have been construed to some people as dishonest i don't know you know whether they were uh, that they were dishonest i'm not making that accusation but there's always in bitcoin these accusations going around that people are scams or dishonest and we thought that there was a market where we could provide a lot of information and that's why on our charts page we provide tons of charts uh to and position ourselves as being the honest pool and hopefully we've managed to accomplish that in some regards mm -hmm. and now what kind of capital outlay on your part was required to go from not having a mining pool to hey we are pro hashing the mining pool it wasn't a significant amount of outlay. I think about ten thousand dollars or so. It was all our own money. The uh, I, this is one of the reasons why I've commented on many forums that projects like Mike Kern's Lighthouse uh, are may not have been as successful as they could have been because to get involved in a programming company, the most important thing is just to start with the talent the servers are pretty inexpensive you know what was mike hearn's lighthouse precisely it was a crowdfunding system where using bitcoin where you could support new projects and and other things uh i'm i'm not an expert in all of its features but the but you don't really need a lot of money to get started in something like this you just need to sit down at a computer and start programming and we've Probably we have a timesheet and we've put in somewhere around, I think, 9,000 hours or so. So the 9,000 hours is significantly more than the $10,000 that we put in in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And so pro hashing is the, the full time venture of you and your brother. It's not, or, or is this like a five hours a week kind of maintenance thing? Oh, no, it's not five hours a week. <laughs> uh, I, well, I work at another position right now because the business does not have enough. Uh, miners yet to be able to support both of us. Chris works full time on this, uh, but you know, between my two jobs, I usually work 70 hours a week. 
And I would say that he probably works uh, 50 or 60 hours. So uh, we're not talking about five, it's more like 130 or so. Mm -hmm. And so uh, is, does it seem feasible to you that uh, with more time and development that ProHashing will be able to support both of you? Uh, I would hope so. I mean, it's, it, it, you know, it, it's hard to make projections, but we're certainly aiming towards that. Mm -hmm. And now um, the, the capital outlay in the beginning when y'all started up, which was uh, about $10,000 worth, you said, what, uh, what precisely did that go into? I mean, I guess, I mean, I guess you need to run a node, a full node, at least one full node for each of the coins that you mine. And, and what else did you need to have? Yes. Um, so I can actually send you an image if you're interested to see some of this, uh, the servers that we have. Definitely. Uh, the, we right now have four servers, and there was there's two that are dedicated entirely to daemons. We found that the best use of, of our money is not to go and buy expensive hardware from Dell and, and places like that. Instead, to just go and buy used components from, uh, from a, a cheap store like Micro Center, which is a computer store that's known for selling very cheap equipment, put together standard computers that you could buy as, as a desktop and then just install daemons on many of these because we have about 160 as i said daemons installed they're split across many of these machines and the daemons are very parallelizable so we can uh all we need to do to put more daemons on is we could just buy more cpu cores and more memory and uh, and more resources and and so that means if you ever wanted to support more networks, that's a very easy thing. It doesn't require any more code. We just buy more computers and throw money at it. Uh, will you um will you will you tell me like what a daemon is? Uh, a daemon is a is a program that connects to a, a coin network. In each coin network, will provide its own code. Like the the Bitcoin Core daemon is is a type of daemon. Uh, there's a Litecoin daemon, a, uh, a, a Nova coin daemon, and uh, any number of other daemons. And they all do the same basic thing, which is to relay blocks, allow you to mine blocks, and so on. All right. So, so, so tapping the wisdom of Steve, if someone were thinking, hey, that's hella cool what Steve does, I want to start a mining pool of some kind. What would you say would be like the three most valuable things that you have learned or the three most valuable pieces of advice you could have for how to be like Steve and Chris? Okay, three things. I would say that, well, first of all, you need to have a lot of time and you can't expect that you're just going to set something up in a few hours and start making a ton of money. There's a lot of free pool software out there, but the free software is not going to be sufficient. It's not programmed well enough to, uh, to be able to, you know, to, to scale to that level and to provide the features that would compete with a lot of the other pools that are out there. I would say that the money is probably not that much of an issue. You don't need to spend the amount of money that we did. The, uh, that most of that money came after we had already earned some money. So it's not like you just have to uh, to come up with a large amount of money and uh, and just start out with, with that. And the third thing is that you need to provide something that is unique to, uh, to pools. We thought that our uniqueness lie, lie in being more honest or trying to be as honest as possible to, uh, to provide a lot of data and to be as profitable as possible. There's other pools that, that try to rely on simplicity or maybe they try to do one coin, but if you don't have anything unique about your pool and you just install off the shelf software, you might make a few bucks, but it's going to take a lot more time than it's worth. Excellent. Well, Steve, thanks so much for your time. So you're prohashing.com and then you blog occasionally. Is it forum or forums.prohashing.com? Forum.prohashing.com. I try to make a post every week or so. The next post I'm going to make is about Ethereum 
and what makes it different than Bitcoin and why people are so enthused about it. And I hope that you'll come and take a look at it. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thanks for your time, Steve, and you have yourself a good day. Thank you. You too. Today's episode is brought to you by Bank to the Future, the online investment platform that invests in the future of finance. One of Bank to the Future's investments was Indian payments company Unocoin. And below, you can find a video link that explains the impact they've had with Bitcoin in India. More information can be found at banktothefuture.com. And my AMA, my Ask Me Anything, is tomorrow, or today, or, or last year, really, depending on when you watch this, March the 26th at reddit.com slash r slash the daily decrypt. I'm going to tell you not only what three things I traded for three bitcoins in December 2013, and not only what three crypto outlets I wrote for before starting the daily decrypt, but also I will tell you how I first heard of Bitcoin and who it was who called me up and asked me if I had heard the good word of currency competition. All of that awaits you tomorrow, March 26th. Drop by at any time. See you then. Pool mining or contract mining is when you pay somebody else to run and maintain cryptocurrency mining hardware on your behalf. To tell us more about how to navigate the exciting seas of contract mining and avoid the scams at the same time, I've reached out to Charlie, who is a researcher and writer at CryptoCompare. You can go and buy a share in their mining operations and hopefully earn a little bit of a profit.